So the audio is really low. That's eh, fine. I'll keep that. Good enough. Okay. Uh, start. Is a work of fiction, blah blah blah. I'm sorry, but I can't stay. But I can't stay here anymore, Nina. <laughs> Don't remind me of Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down, honey. If we just talk it out. So many strange things keep happening after another. Every day, there's this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but... I checked every faucet. Every ceiling. Every pipeline. And still. Still, I hear it everywhere. Constantly echoing in my ears. It almost looks like like a like a face, like a little like a little face. Oh, but the water! I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear, I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk. And they walk. Upstairs, then downstairs. And upstairs, and downstairs, and upstairs, and downstairs, and upstairs, and upstairs, and upstairs, and upstairs, and it goes on, and on, and on, and on, like that. But somehow, it does come to an end. And it ends all in front of your grandfather's room. I know this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand, honey. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather, honey. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Ooh. Something terrible is lurking through the ha through this house. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. Not another game to put on the list. <laughs> I mean, you're on time to, uh, I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm, I just started the game, so, uh, you're still on time. I can't just leave, honey. That's my home. Please, Nina. This place, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, honey. But I can't just leave things like this, honey. It's my home. It's my home, honey. Dinner, 7 a.m. Uh, amid a foggy morning, there sits a man in the corner of a booth. He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. And today, it was just a black coffee. Uh... I swear, I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. 
freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of our team. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. My foot. Oh, it was quoted, so like, you're a valuable temp member of our team, Hugo. My foot. I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Ah. <sighs> I'm gonna make the Yu Gi joke so bad. Hold on. Hugo Lart, uh, Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of, uh, at his cup of Joe and Chugs, chugs it all in one sitting. And then he continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need to find a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks uh, out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run from my fate, I guess. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them were, uh, some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of missing person cases. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things come comes with a price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Sounds rough, man, if I join? An annoyingly familiar voice interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Good morning, Hugo. Hugo Chane! Hugo da! I have to. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. Then he gathers the file and shoves them and shoves it back into the binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes uh, takes this as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to uh, relay his order. To relay his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and now, uh, and the now jumbled newspaper clippings. All the while, Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today? I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little? There's a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered the big breakfast for the two of us. Two? As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Uh... At the... Search up what you said to get the reference. Wait. 
Uh, because the game is good, I'll uh, slide, had to search up what you said in the reference. Also, are you not gonna play the remastered versions of a lot of games? Like, Eve Misal? I think I did play the, the remastered versions of, the, of those two. Because those are the ones on Steam, right? I think I, I, I started with the remasters. As if the world could not grace know of a new more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Damn, this is cool. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat, don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious, right Hugo? Are you even listening to me? No, they were the original games? I think, wait, let me check. Yeah, because those are the only ones that are on Steam, and... Like, the only versions that are on Steam. I played the Steam version of both of them, so... I don't think I played the originals. Unless the ones on Steam are the originals, but that doesn't sound right. Come now, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when, uh... If you don't eat now, who knows when you will. And I'm not go- I'm not about to let you faint again. So, open wide. Noah de Leon, age 27. A natural born charmer. Is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives uh, finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. It's good. Right? Good food will always cheer you up. Damn it, I got swept away again. Oh by the way. The chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. So for Misao, the remake version is called Misao Definitive Edition and it's on Steam. I think that's the one I have. That's the one I played. Uh, let me check. No, it's... Where is it? Where is it? I'll find it one day. Fuck is that? There it is. Yeah, Misal Definitive Edition. And for Eeb. It's, it's just called Eeb. But it's on Steam. Uh, for the e remake, I think it's only on console. The ports for PC, I think. Oh. I mean, if it's only on console, then I don't think I can play it. I mean, I guess if, if, there, if there's PC ports. Hmm. But also, no, that, didn't, that doesn't sound right, because when I... I remember looking some things up, and I remember seeing some images that were a little bit different from what I was seeing in the game. Steam version is only the original game? Really? Unless I was seeing the remaster. Or the remake. In those images. Hmm. I don't know. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Mm, yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. I guess it was a pretty... I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? 
We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get, I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? You could just rest for the day. And pass up this, boss, this opportunity to get to know you better? Quit it. This guy is cool though, I like him. Um... Because I only played the remake and uh, when watching a bit of your stream, the game looked different, so I don't know. Oh, I guess I was seeing... Uh, I guess the the images I saw were of the remake then. And I was playing the original. I don't know, because I barely used my Switch. <laughs> After their enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo's car. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. He's so cute. You're a good boy. The big dog stares at the sound of the car opening, uh... Of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Ha, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy lidded eyes slowly peek to see who calls for him. It is his one and only partner, his human. As if, finally, uh, as if finally realizing who he is, or where he is, the old bloodhound steers up from his sleep, pounces at Yugo and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Cute. Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap? Colby, 8 years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. Has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. Noah, who is witnessing all of this uh, from the back seat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times I try, when it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. Agency. The three headed back to the office. The space... Uh, just the same as Hugo left it. A decent organized mess. To his credit, the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albeit, could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks less crowded. Oh, shut it, will you? I said I was going to get to it. Thanks, boy. Before Yuga could continue, he observed had... Uh, he does... Could continue, he give deserved head pats. Yes. Yes. He notices someone. A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the storefront. The woman appears a bit frantic. Uh, dish, d disheveled, f the dishwasher, and uh, wearing ill-fitted clothes. She appears to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. Uh, I'm so sorry. I know that the clothes sign is up, but I saw you. But I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help. My grandfather, he... Oh, that's uh, that's Nina, isn't it? And before she can continue, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay, we hear... we'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. Poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing in relief. 
She then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can, I st uh, can you start off by telling us your name? I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina uh, Mortimer. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight, honey. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is, honey. Miss Mortimer, if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No. I've tried questioning their help, but they all gave me the same answer. I pain when I hear that name. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, in fact, you know what? You know what hurts more for me? Hugo. I know that it's spelled with a H and not a Y, but Hugo here. You go here, uh... That, that, that hurts... More for me. I've tried requesting their help. But they all gave me the same answer. Yeah, they didn't want to pay more. Yeah. There's nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Lois was. Lois? Nina fidgets at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. My grandfather, he received a cryptic message the other day, honey. It didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. He's better now, I think, and also, uh, uh, and also for mother. Wait, mother? What? Huh? As she hands over the letter, Yuga notices her hand slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. At first glance, it seems like any other, uh, any normal written message. A person named Lois asking the other, uh, asking the other, Henry, who come to meet him by the lake at midnight. Needing to share something important with him. Yeah, mom, the only... Oh! Oh, mom. The only mom in V2. Oh, I thought you meant, like, his mom. I mean, yeah, they both rebranded. Same with Mesa. You know what's funny, right? I always thought that Nina left to join V Shoujo. Which she did, I was right. But I thought she was gonna do that like way before any other graduation was gonna happen. Uh, but then Mr. joined V Shoujo before Nina. Even though I thought like she was gonna do that like way before. I don't know like what took her this long. <laughs> Needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am, co I am coming for you, Henry. Were there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them, honey. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but... Ain't hey, glad for them now? Yeah. This one. This one was different, honey. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or family friend. 
I have plans to start V2 and then try to go to Niji, but damn, Niji is a mess now. Yeah. Fucking, fucking Mika left. Is leave. Well, not left. She's leaving. And she might be joining V Shoujo because uh, she was relatively close to both Misa and, and Nina. So considering that they both joined V Shoujo, I wouldn't be surprised if Mika leaves Niji to go to V Shoujo. I actually, the funny thing is I actually did set, uh, I actually did send like a, I actually did do like the application. Yeah, aside for that now, yeah. Hmm. Like, fuck, everyone is leaving. <laughs> Not a relative or family friend, but they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't know, if I don't do anything about this, I'll lose. I'll lose him too, honey. I watched it so much, also Mr. and Nina, yeah. I especially watched, like, you, you, I, I remember, like, after Missa graduated, she literally, like, released, like, an animation of, like, her, of, like, her lie detector test with Mr. <laughs> that was after he graduated. Even after he, even after death, she was still milking him. Stop saying honey. <laughs> no, no, I have committed. I have committed. I mean, I guess technically it wouldn't fit the name Nina anymore, but. Uh. What was. Her, her new name? <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Mika is literally a genius, yeah. She is a dumbass genius. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. That was super gore, yeah. But uh, I think it was like a complicated name that I don't think I'm gonna see in any game, like no matter how hard I try. Hiding away her tears, uh, her tear streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. Matara, yeah, I'm, I'm not finding that anywhere. <laughs> there is no way anyone is called Matara. As an actor of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina, while Noah fetches tissues for her. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this lowest person is, they're coming. Do you want more tissues? I'll do it. I'll take on your case. For a moment, silence fills the room. Only stares that are directed at Hugo, until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. You'll... take it? Hugo simply nods. Maybe a, a Naruto game that messed up dying, dying to die into tot, yeah. But then that wouldn't. But then that wouldn't be. Eh, fuck it. I guess. But if it's a Naruto game, it's likely that it would have voice acting. And usually, I don't tend to read the voice acting. By any voice acted parts. Thank you. Thank you, honey. You don't know how much this means to me, honey. We've got to help, miss. 
Nina. Nina is fine, honey. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Yeah, you won't see that name ever. <laughs> Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. This is my address. Wait, Church Street? You gonna leave, man? It's man. Damn, you're just gonna leave me alone. God damn. I'm pretty sure she's not gonna be around. It's just pain. It's pain for me too, okay? But I have committed. I have committed to to carrying on her legacy. I'll be sure to greet you when you get there, detective. She politely bows once more before heading to the car and drives back home. <laughs> Stop damning you masochist, to be fair. If I wasn't a masochist, I wouldn't be doing I would not be streaming for four weeks in a goddamn row. <laughs> what do you expect from me? <laughs> once out of sight, you go turns to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later again. You got a point? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> From the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the re uh, the rearview mirror. Noah, who usually ch uh, chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. Uh, hey, Ever, welcome back. Sorry I didn't come watch, I was busy. Yeah, that's fine. He looks out to the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Hey. You're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? <laughs> this is a surprise. You've been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. You usually just talk to me. You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? Just say it. I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. Uh. Uh, if I won't die, he'll be here for a while, or not, who knows. Uh, I hope I die, but knowing my luck, I won't. So, yeah. But, it's her last name that caught me off guard. Have you heard of, have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been struck with so many tragedies that over the, that over time people began to believe they were cursed or something. Every other year, I would see a headline on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they... Uh, she probably thought they perceive her as paranoid. Or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. I can't imagine all this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. Think of, think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. 
Uh, besides, two are better than one. Exactly. I was... My throat. Exactly. I'll sign with Colby coming with me. Well... You heard that three is better than two. Uh Oh god. Middle Sleepies is coming in. Passing through countless dirt roads uh, and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. Nestled and tucked away from uh, prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they parked adjacent to Nina's car. Wow. And to think she came all the way, uh, all this way just to request us. It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Maybe she really didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Immediately, after exiting the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. His gaze hazes as he leans close to the car. Like a fish drawn out from sea, he desperately heaves. To this ache, he arbors pales in comparison to a pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No, something far more sinister. He feels it. Someone is watching him. A piercing gaze fixed on him. Like leering at a, at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. What the hell? Damn it already. I need to hurry or else. Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, snapping him out of his fixated, uh, fixated trance. Colby nudges his head against Yuga, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did you hear that just now? Oh... Your game is lagging on your stream? Fuck. Why? Oh, it's not the game lagging, it's the stream lagging. Fuck. Oh wait, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the stream lagging. Shit. Um, wait, it seems fine now. Now it's fine. How long has it been like that? Hmm. Maybe I'll switch to game capture if, uh, if it happens again. Because maybe it's a window capture problem. No, it's probably a stream problem now that I think about it. Because I saw that my model was also, um, was also slower than usual. Did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice. It was so close to my ear. I... Is everything alright, honey? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit winded out of the trip, that's all. I'd be happy to make you coffee at the very least. Didn't even notice I was in a grieving state because of a mother. Uh, yeah. And it's back. Okay, hold on. Let me switch to game capture. Can you play Glow Grid 2? Uh, maybe. Uh. There we go. Hopefully it's, it works better. Now the stream is lagging, I noticed.
Uh, where is it? Crimson, there we go. Where is it? Okay. If it's no trouble. Uh, no, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, this subtle uneasiness. Uh, once again, this subtle uneasiness from Nina's from Nina surfaces. Before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're all right? You sounded like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. I think you should... Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently, as if contemplating something. I... I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Oh, well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. Hugo Janet, Hugo Da. His assistant, Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah D. Leon. Ah. It seems so surreal. Just like a cartoon. <laughs> Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Lauren. Why is... Okay, the stream is... Okay, there is something wrong. Because, like... Oh, the game crashed. That's what that's what was wrong. Um, when did I save? Um, the answer is never. And the game just crashed. Hmm. I almost want to say I'm going to bed. I also noticed you played Duck Game for a while. You could play some games again. I remember playing Duck Game like years ago with a friend, honestly. Give me a nostalgia trip. Thanks, man. Check for auto saves. I might. I don't know if it has auto saves. That's what I was kind of hoping for. Um, but yeah, the, my friend Ivy wanted to play. Um, wanted to play Duck Game. She just messaged me out of nowhere. I was like, Yeah, sure, I'll play Duck Game. Please have auto saves. Please have auto saves. Please have auto saves. Please have auto saves. Uh, the game isn't even opening. Wow. Okay. Oh. Um. Okay, um... Okay. Ugh. Oh, thank fuck. Um... I mean... This was a while ago, but... At least I can... I can't autosave. Um... I think I can, actually. Skip on syntax. Uh, I skipped too much. Um, history.
just like before, as if carefully choosing her words, her next words. Should I just restart? Should I load? Let's just restart. I get it. I get it. I'll restart. I'll fucking restart. I skipped too much, okay? God damn it. Doggo. Load. Um. Thank you, autosave. Here I'll just manually skip because because uh, I'll probably skip something. Hello, mom. So before, as if Kev probably choosing her next words. She decides that in this situation, words are not enough. You see for yourselves what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three of uh, the three to follow behind. Hugo is about to en uh, enter through the foyer uh, when he feels a tug on his arm. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. And with that, no one releases the, his grip on Yugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Yugo notices that the interior is just as grand. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, uh, it, excu it, it ex 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 exudes. It, ex it, um, it's your mom's ex. An elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. However, Yuga notices something even more distinct than the splendor. This house is much more terrifying uh, inside than out. Please come this way, honey. Raising themselves, they enter the dimly lit uh, drawing room. At first glance, you're okay. Oh, I'm too tired to read. <sighs> At first glance, you could not dis discern the silhouette situated at the far corner however on closer inspection the he now understand understands the region <laughs> however on closer inspection he now understands the reason for all of nina's unsettling vagueness grandfather we have guests sitting on the armchair is a young man who is a grandfather. He looks younger than his granddaughter. He is dressed in a white uh, colored down dress shirt tucked in with uh, black slacks and black penny loafers. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there, dazed, with little acknowledgement of the people around him. But I do like his eyes. He's got some... Some very nice eyes, I gotta admit. Still motionless, like a doll. Grandpa... These are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Laurent, and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Even after introducing them to the head of 
uh, Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them, and yet he remains forever unchanging, forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? The young man still does not reply back. Never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room. Only fixed on the rain. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer. Bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There's an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes. They're similar to his own. I don't see it. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. Nina, that man. Yes, he's my grandfather, honey. The one I asked you all to watch over. I I know it's hard to believe, honey, but Nina draws something out from her pocket. This is an antique picture of a young man with slick uh with slicked back hair wearing a lux a luxurious suit. He appears to be uh po posed and refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he is the same person. Then why does he look so young? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I rushed to help him up. Wait, he's not sitting down anymore. Oh wait, he is. I think he's- I think, uh, the detective is covering him. I rushed to help him, but when- But he- When I did, he looked so different. Many things were rushing- were rushing to my head. And yet, he felt so similar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. And his face. I recognized his face. He just looked younger. That was also the same night I found that letter. I was next to him, already opened. I'm sorry again for all this. Do I just go to sleep? <laughs> I'm tired as fuck. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the ladder, and now this? Maybe my family is really cursed. They're not. Curses aren't real. Detective? I think we easily get too involved in believing in that sort of thing. Uh, in believing that sort of thing, like, sort of thing exists. In reality, the ones who fixate on it uh, feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies—all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. 
Let me see how long this game is because I'm actually really fucking tired. Um Okay, it's about it's about half an hour long. I think I can do that. Might take me longer knowing me, but eh. We know I'm stupid. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you we'll see this through. For you and your daughter. Or for you and your grandfather. What the fuck did I read? Oh my god. Thank you. Good. Now our first priority is to find out about Lois. Nina. The letter, the letter you showed us back at the agency. Do you have it with you? Ah, uh, yes. It's here, honey. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course, honey. I'll check upstairs, Noah. Uh, wait. I'll check upstairs, Noah. You and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in close enough for Nina not to hear. Keep a close eye on Miss Mortimer and Nina. Oh, wait, on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. And with that... Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. <sighs> After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his finding his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Yugo walk to, walks towards the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, you see the extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From customized drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes that extravagance. But much like the interior, Yugo has seen so far he finds... Uh, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is moldering, despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here for too long. Mortimer State, 11.50 p.m. He searches and searches, still with no sign of anything. Not one thing pertaining to Lois. Damn it, nothing? It's as if he cleared out everything, just blank everywhere. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is the only proof Lois exists so far. I tried to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. Bearing no, for, uh, bearing no foreboding uh, threat at the bottom. Wait, bearing no foreboding thread at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. What the? You can't come then, I understand. It's pretty dreary after all. Ah, but if I can ask you 
Uh, if I can ask one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Lu Lois. This is the same Lois. I thought he was the cause of all this. I don't understand. Val, warning, the sound of a click, the sound of a click can be heard across the bedroom, as if someone, as if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees at the foot of the, uh, of the bed a chest. Unlike the other furniture, it's dark, uh, and rustic thick features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Preparing himself, he, op he opens the chest. Inside, scrambled together are, bun uh, are bunches of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he stumbles across an old newspaper article. An unidentified young man was found on the monitoring of... Three days prior to his death, according to police, ruled out as a suicide. Police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned, uh, drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss. An unfortunate event indeed. Comments. No claim of his body has been made yet. Lois. By the corner of Hugo's eye, he spots a bright glint buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines uh, unblemished, retaining a timeless luster. Uh, inside it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses smiling brightly. This must be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture... He put it here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? I think this is where the endings start splitting. Leave the locket. I think it's best to put it back for now. He goes about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly, the lights shut off. A scream is heard, followed by a myriad of shouts. Hugo is about to call out to Noah, who stops at the sight of pale feet before him. Looming over him, stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. It appears as a young man, but Hugo knows it's far from it. No. This very thing is trying to imitate a human form. Trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear. He is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps towards him. Just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within. But this time, it's drawing nearer. Inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach. Lodged in his throat, 
he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Don't get in my way. All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gaps and he gasps desperately for air. His vision blurred and uh, and breathing jagged. He staggered towards the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! For a distance, he faintly hears the sound of Colby's relentless barking, as if getting further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the window. He tries to open, but it's just like the door. A heavy force prevents him from doing so. Fuck this. Frantically looking around the room, he spots a chair nearby. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. By the time the window cracks, the lar uh, the larger... Wait... By oh wait, bit by bit the window crack the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting up smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made out of? Still trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you! Just break already. Clearing out the remaining glass shards, you go. Peers his head out to see any ring he can grab a uh, hold of. Oh my god, I s So the rain is making the stream lag. So that's what it is. However, he discovers instead that the- Instead that the wall in adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out of the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet, to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches starts to tear away from the wall. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when his hand slips out of reach. Shit! Clamoring wildly as he loses grip of the ivy. Uh, he loses grip on the ivy. He crash lands down onto the thicket of bushes. Air forced out of him. He heaves uncontrollably trying to even out his breathing. But even that is, uh, laborious. An immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. Oh, just like me right now. God, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams in pain, he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and uh, haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where the tragedy starts and ends. Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby! Noah! Where are you? 
He hears faintly the sound of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop, Grandpa! Let me go, my grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous, you'll get hurt too. I don't care. I... I don't want to lose anyone anymore, honey. It's at that instant, Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's, in Nina's stead. Hugo? No, don't. Please fall deaf to his ears. Not even the whines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and disheveled. As if all the life had been drained from him. Surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean, uh, could lean in, Hugo reaches out his... Uh, reaches out and tugs his arm. Mr. Mort Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down here, so please come back into... Into the shore with me. Motionless and non-responsive, he still stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. Tanina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. You have felt it. A sight jolt from Henry's arm, as if stirred by the mention of Nina. He slowly returns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jer jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold to him. All of this is his fault. If only, if only I could, if only I got to Lois sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry inches to, inches even closer to the edge, and I'm about to break. Lois, I'm sorry. I should have, should have, should have what? Gone home in his stead. Gone with him. You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lois. I... I've had enough. Lois is waiting for me. He's waiting for... He's waiting for me to come home. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappeared into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him into the abyss. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shock running, uh, running rampant through his body. Like spice. Like, uh, like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tips of his fingers. Piercy and non-yielding. Uh, his chest tightens and his heart races as the 
as he begins to kick his legs. Hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees uh, faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck. Finally squeezing all the all the air out of him. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movement begins to weigh heavier and heavier. Water filling into his lungs as his vision starts to blur. The cold numbness spreads. Uh, tired and motionless, he watches on as the abyss draws near, swallowing him, embracing him. Let's share this happy ending together. Bad end, a mermaid's tail. Well, that's unsettling. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna call it off, because I... I cannot read. <laughs> like, I slept for a long time, but god, that was not a pleasant time. Uh. Oh, okay, there's the audio. Anyway, uh, I think last stream I got the... I got the bad ending by leaving the locket, so I'm gonna take the locket. I should probably hold on to this for now. Hugo's about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor. Already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly, the light shut off. A scream is heard followed by a myriad of shout shouts. Yuga's about to call out to Noah, but uh, but stops at the sight of a, of pale feet before him. Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded com in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotion. It appears as a young man, but Yugo knows that it's far from it. No, this very thing is trying to imitate a human form, trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps towards him. It's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from within. But this time, it's drawing nearer, inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodged in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing shallow, he tries to force his body to move. And then it stops. Looking down at Yugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Don't get in my way. All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip, and he gasps desperately for air. His vision blurred, and breathing jagged. He staggered towards the door. He yanks at the handle several times, but it's tightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it. From a distance, he faintly hears the sound of Colby's relentless barking as it's getting further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the door, uh, towards the window, I'm blind. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, a heavy force prevents him from going, uh, from doing so. Fuck this. 
Frantically looking around the room, he spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and starts to strike the window. Hit by bit, uh, bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made out of? Trying to catch his breath, he musters all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you. Just break already. Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peers his head out to see any railing he can grab hold of. However, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent to its uh, to uh, adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how ep my nose is stuffy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of, of the vines. Carefully, he climbs out of the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet to his luck, the patch of vines he clutches starts to tear away from the wall. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another but fails when his hand slips out of reach. Shit! Clamoring wildly as he loses grip of the ivy, he crash lands down onto a thicker, uh, onto a thicket of bushes. Air force out of him. He, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spreads across not only his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet... Uh, and haggard breathing, whatever the fuck that means, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where this tragedy, um, to the lake where this tragedy starts and ends. Finally, entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. Colby, Noah, where are you? He hears faintly the sound of barking and echoes of people yelling into, uh, in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop, Grandpa! Let me go, honey. My grandpa, he's... Nina, please. It's dangerous. You'll get hurt, too. I don't care, honey. I... I don't want to lose anyone anymore, honey. It's at that instant, Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Hugo? No, don't. Please fall deaf to his ears. Not even the whines and worries, uh, not even the whines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined he, trudge Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and... Dishev dish disheveled, whatever the fuck that means. As if... 
all the life had been drained from him. Surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he stares deeply into the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. Sight jolt from Henry's arm, as if steered by the mention of Nina. He slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, retching his arm away from Hugo's hold to him. All of this is my fault. If only... If only I got to Lois sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry inches to... Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lois, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't solve anything. Not for you or Lois. I... I read what he wrote to you those years, like, uh, those years ago. He understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lois never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lois's locket? Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all of that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lois. All of it together. Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Henry had yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. Wait, his eyes are back to normal. What fool believes in a deserved forgiveness? Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him. To a stranger. Maybe... He can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around Henry, Henry instead. What am I hearing? Its arms unnaturally con contort around him. While its head perches on his shoulder. This thing. This Lois. No longer pretending to be human. With piercing cold green eyes. It glares directly at Hugo. Mocking him. Cursing him. Wishing nothing but despair. Hold on, let me see what. Let me hear what it's saying. I can't hear it. Properly. Wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved? We can be forgiven? There is only one true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest of endings. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries he and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him. Into the abyss. And now we're stuck in the abyss. Like a never-ending pit. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body. Like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the, tip, uh, to the tips of his fingers. Fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens 
and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs. Hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck. Violently squeezing all of the air out of him. He tries desperately to wrench his hand out, uh, to wrench his hand away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movement begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Lois, where are you, Lois? It's looking for Lois? Digging deep into his coat's pocket, he grabs tightly... Uh, he grabs tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten. Holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark. Ah, there you are. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead... I just saw that OBS was disconnecting. But it seems fine on stream. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking at, taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks with all his might to grab it to grab at Henry's arm. With his heart burning and his body screaming. He swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to. As the light from the surface begin to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before he loses his consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards them, getting closer and closer. And then... Everything fades to black. Drifting along with the uh, with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through the wave after wave, not knowing where he's going, uh, not knowing where he's going or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he's had a good night's rest? Uh, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. I'm sorry for starting you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Lois. You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worry. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. With his eyes closed and his senses still returning, he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Whining as he tries to wake up, uh, as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo. He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shut wide open. Eyes shut wide open. Right open. He jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pat his back while Kobe continues to whine over Hugo. What happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness. 
I swear, you don't listen to a damn word I say. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Laurent? Oh, Nina. There's something I want you to meet, honey. Behind her stand, uh, stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side, pensively as he ponders as he ponders to himself. Although his youth has long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer piercing and vicious green. His eyes are just like Nina's. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lois lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And I kept hurting. Not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her. The, bla the one to blame for all this. But you... Someone that I've never met still went out of your way to try and save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hand one last time. I hope that someday, you too will overcome it. Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Morning. With much f uh, f fear, war, and haste, Hugo resumes writing on his notepad. Although, by closer inspection, he looks like he's going to combust at any minute. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet... And I don't like eating by myself. Let me guess. Two is better than one? Bingo! Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Ah, shut it, will you? I swear, if only I, had, I hadn't I had fallen off from the goddamn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the uh, bacon, he pauses at the mention of Hugo's report. Oh yeah, by the way. Mind telling me what happened to the Mortimer's window? Um... I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is... Why is it broken? Do you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it uh, before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bill... Uh, wait... And also the bill. And? Surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just called it a day all after the, uh, after all of that? Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it. Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I keep insisting... Well, but each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. Said that we already went through a lot for them, so it was nothing in comparison. Ugh. You know what? He's right. After all we went through, I deserve at least a nap. 
Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Colby follows after him. Aw, oh, what a good boy. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. Heavily sighing, Noah set aside the food on his desk and joins the, uh, the other two at the couch. Ugh, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. Shut it. Aww, what a good boy. Colby whines, asking for head scratches. Ah, sorry boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ears as he, cl uh, as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad you came along yesterday. Oh, what's this? Are you getting chummy with me now? Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. Found and saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserve it. You too. A calming silence fills the room as the three fall deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations. Just each other's comfort and sharing this small but rewarding night's rest. Good end. A night's rest. Thank you for playing. You're welcome. Oh, no credits or anything. What's a break room? Out. Oh. Concept gallery. Hold up. Well, so this is where it was supposed to be. Who's a good boy? He is the best boy. Oh, wait. Hmm. Alright. Well, that was the game.